Hi there, welcome back to Salerno 43 here on Diagonal Move, moving straight into turn two. I've panned the camera out somewhat from the last video because I just want you to be able to see the initial reinforcement moves, which are currently down the bottom here for the, the Germans with various members of the 29th Panzer Grenadiers and a couple of uh, other units there. Plus more at the top, we have some of the uh, Luftwaffe units as well. So it's one of the bigger reinforcement turns for the German side. In the early part of the game, the Germans do get quite a few reinforcements come on at the north and the south of the map. Relatively few for the Allies, with the exception of this floating reserve here, which will slowly come on during this turn and potentially into next turn as well, depending on how things go. The game up to this point has had a uh, mixed success for both sides with the uh, Allies landing onto the beaches, but really being held in place around here uh, where, with Red Beach and Blue Beach and the American forces uh, by the, the, the Germans there. And also uh, with the forces around the airfield in this hex here, which is Monte Corvino airfield. Bit of a tussle over that last, last turn. Um, but the Commonwealth forces are on the beach. Little bit of a breakthrough there from the Rangers to the towards the uh, town of La Sierra Le Fiore, um, but it has left them in quite a precarious supply position potentially because this group from the 16th Panzers here has come in outside uh, Salerno. Okay. Um, First thing to do though on the turn, before we jump into how the reinforcements are going to move, is actually roll for the weather and apply any movement on the weather track. And we have a three, which means the counter moves one space towards the right. And we now have the air units available for the British uh, and the US. We also have naval units available for both sides as well, both of the Allied sides that is no air units for the germans but we do have a supply point for each side which i'll just add on now okay we now need to move on to the initial phase for the the german side i've put the reinforcements on already just to save a little bit of time but we need now need to think about moving those as we get into the movement phase um, no replacements this time, nothing's on the track regarding that. So we now just have the option of flipping our, our ASU units with those supply points. We only have one that's currently being used for the Germans, so we'll flip that over and just adjust that supply point track down a wee bit to reflect that. Um, other than that, I believe we are done for the initial phase for the Germans. Pretty quick, this admin stuff usually. And then we move on to the movement. And here's where we have a few things to think about. And I think what I'll do is I'll start at the top with the reinforcements, move the reinforcements at the bottom, and then think about what to do with the units that are currently more in the center of the map. They're a bit more of a difficult decision. So just for the first unit up the top here, I'll bring this one down through the mountains to try and prevent any breakthrough for through the mountain pass there should that happen uh, and this is a unit from the 15th panzer grenadiers the mobile infantry uh, and we'll just pop this on there can move five no movement restrictions for the german side there now um, and so if we start up here we can move road, use road movements we can go one two three, four, five will get us here. Then we can use that extended movement for another three spaces, which would be one, two, and three. Yep, right in the middle of that pass there. So that would actually be quite nice uh, blocking space really for, for that unit to sit in for the time being. Um, then we have the other units at the top here. Now at the top here, we do have those Hermann Goering units. They are Luftwaffe uh, aligned forces. Uh, we have a mobile infantry, a HG division 
ASU and then a Panzers. Um, and I think what they nearly need to do is to try and dislodge those Rangers from their spot there, because that is a VP Hex, as is this one here. Um, and really shore up this spot, because if enough of those uh, enough of those strength points get to the reinforcements area, which I'm hoping you can just about see at the top of the screen, um, that will be victory points for the Allied side, and quite a significant number as well. Uh, five points for the uh, reinforcement hex just there, and then four for the reinforcement hexes here. So let's try to prevent that as the Germans. Um, and I'll keep them together in a stack. Uh, actually, I'll keep the mobile infantry and the panzers together in a stack, and they will come on using just the regular move, sort of movement that they're allowed to use. So that'll be one two and then they can move straight into the uh, zone of control there of the rangers whereas the asu will come on with just the one space to still allow it to be able to be used uh, and not have to flip to its disrupted side due to the special movement moves and that is a one two three four actually that's going to be just outside support range anyway so let's move that through a little bit more to Sano to make sure nobody takes Sano, and we'll have to flip that. We have to put a disruptive marker on that to prevent it from being used this turn. Okay, um, down in the south, let's um, move some of these these 29th Panzer Grenadier Division units, as well as the 76th Panzer Corps ASU and a garrison. Let's move those up to support uh, or to pressurize the beaches here. Uh, and I think we'll start with the garrison and the ASU. They both have five movement points uh, as part of their normal movement. They have they are mechanized units. And five movement points will get us using road movement on the minor roads is one, two, three. We jump to major road uh, major road movement, which is then one for three hexes. So we've moved three, four, and then five. Can't move adjacent to these guys with, with extended movement. I don't really want to sit there. So what I might do is I might actually bring them this way towards the, the port there of Agropoli to try to support but let's see how far we can get those. That would be one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three. We can kind of get them fairly close, not super close, but close enough to be there for the next uh, next turn, should we need them for anything. Um, the ASU is disrupted. The other, the other unit isn't. Uh, okay, the Panzer Grenadiers are going to come up and be a bit more, a bit more forceful, pressurizing this region here. Um, okay, how do we wish to do that? We could potentially come up this way, which is actually a major road. And and on the map, it's interesting that this particular road here has its markers. Uh, for the road movement on the board, so you can easily see where the where the five movement points will take you, but none of the others do, which is quite quite interesting. Uh, but I suppose this would be the main road into the primary breaching point, I suppose, for the Allies just here. Um, so let's do that nice and quick. All three of them will move straight up there using their regular road movement, and then extended road mo road movement. We'll get them to uh, Alta Vila Silentia, and that unit is disrupted as well. That um, ASU unit is disrupted. Okay, so we can't use that to support combat this turn. Onto the other units then. Um, I think I'll, again I'll, I'll just start at the top and move my way down really. 
Uh, this unit hadn't yet moved, but we will move the garrison one and two to support the defense of San no Sano, should we need it. We can't move this one yet, that's a Falschmark unit under there, but we can't use it until we are able to actually free it or to release it in turn three. That's it's one of its special rules. Um, I'll keep the pandas there, although they do look slightly challenged in terms of their supply. Could be cheeky, could be cheeky and grab back that that VP hex. It only cost us two to move out of the zone of control of the commandos, and then it'd be, yeah, well within range. But obviously that would then risk these guys punching up uh, without anything to stop them doing that. Um, and in fact, that space there is quite open. Maybe I should have brought units down this way. I really don't know. Um, not a strategy guide, as I often say. But anyway, let's leave them there. These ones will stay put for now. And in fact, they will... If I move, if I move here, they would be costing two to leave the zone of control, two to get into the hills, and then we could use the road movement, and that would be in this space. And then basically we'd have to stop there. So I think what I'll do is I'll leave that unit there, and I'll push this unit one space, and then into the city for another couple, um, defending that, that VP point. As the Germans, I really need to be trying to attack those beachheads, especially in this scenario, because once the, once the Allies get off the beachheads, it's quite difficult to, to stop them moving. Uh, at least I've found it's quite difficult to stop them moving. It's, it's, it's this area here that is the most dangerous for the Allies, whereas once they get off that, it then becomes more much more attritional. Okay, that one will stay put. Don't want to disrupt that just in case we need it for anything. Those guys moved. This one is going to stay put. Okay, I think that is actually movement done for for the German side. Let's um, zoom in a wee bit and try and look at some combat in a bit more detail. While I was moving the camera stand, I kind of thought that maybe this unit should be moved after all. It's uh, my bad infantry from the 16th. Panzers. Um, if I move it here, it could get a Zock bond with the unit under there once it's free from disruption, which would be applicable in the Allied turn, this or the Allied phase, this go. And also, it would prevent the Allies really just charging in and trying to create havoc with these quite large forces that got with large stacks. So let's just do that. It will cost me four to move there, but at least it's not uh, quite as under threat that unit as before. And hopefully we can create some kind of defensive um, perimeter or something there. Not quite sure how you describe it. Are we still in range of the defenses if we need them? One, two, three, four, five. No, we're not in range of the ASU. But I won't move it for now because I do want to keep something in that VP hex at the Boli. Let's see how we go. Okay, some combat then, uh, potentially. The units here we have, uh, they're just slightly, just about in the shop. We've got a, a mobile infantry with a value, a strength attack value of three. Uh, some panzers under there with a strength attack value of two, making that a total of five. They would be coming up against the Rangers, which would be a total of four defence doubled due to the city. So that's going to be five versus eight, which would be one to two. At this point, I don't really want to do that because I can't pull in the ASU to support just yet. So I think I will not do combat just there. Next turn, I do have another fast melee unit there, plus potentially, if I recall correctly, some more reinforcements coming on up at the north and I think it will be sensible to use those during that that round. Equally this is attacking with four of the reconnaissance units from the 16th. Don't have really any support for them and again they would be at a one to two with the four attacking strength total of four doubled uh, due to the city uh, meaning they'd be at one to two four versus eight 
probably, again, probably not worth the effort, even though these guys are likely to be out of supply. Uh, possibly. Um, possibly out of supply. I'll have to check that. Right, what else are we going to do? Nothing down here in terms of combat. So we move down to the Red Beach and Blue Beach regions with the the ally, uh, the, the American side. Um, hopefully that's still on screen. Okay, so we have a, quite a slightly underwhelmingly strength unit there, which is just, just reduced, which would give our 16th Panzers a total of four. We don't have an ASU to support this turn. Oh, actually, no, we don't. It was disrupted and it's not part of the same division anyway. And the Panzers here, uh, the, the divisional ASU is here, so quite out of range. Um, so to have an attack, in, attack of four here, we would be defending with eight plus the two for the beachhead, that would be 10. That would be, again, at a disadvantage of one to two. Here we have perhaps something slightly more promising, which is a, a, a two, a defensive strength for the tank destroyer unit there. Uh, nothing for the divisional ASU. They only defend when they are alone in the hex. And then we have the beachhead, which is a plus two to any, any other results. So, and that would be a total of four versus four, meaning we would have a one-to-one. -one. Can't add in any kind of buff for the Germans, but I think that's worth doing in case we can luck out a little bit and force a, um, force a move. The, the two tanks would cancel each other out. We do have the Panzer underneath there with a value of three and a, and a tank destroying unit, their, their tank shift would cancel each other out. So let's just go for a one-to-one. -one. Uh, the Americans though might be able to add in on the defensive side. They do have air support. Question is, do I risk that air support now? Or do I try and... I think I will. I think I'll chuck that in to make that a one-to-two on the American side, making that quite a risky attack for the Germans. Let's bring up the trusty, trusty uh, dice tower borrowed from another game. That's a six on a one to two, uh, meaning it's an A1 DR2. The A1 DR2 result means the attacker loses a step, defender must retreat, and become disrupted or conduct a determined defense. So the attacker will lose a step. Only step realistically is gonna be the infantry. We can now do the determined defense. The lead unit will be the tanks. We could put in the, the, the defensive support for the Navy, but I don't think I will. I think I'll just see how it goes because they could be used for an attack. However, having said that, there's some pretty decent sized units around there that could push back without needing it. Let's put that in. Let's put that in for a determined defense buff of plus one on the roll. And my trusty dice tower coming back is a four buffed up plus one to five, meaning we can either have um, a delay or we lose a step and hold. I think losing a step and holding is the way to go there. Yeah, so the lead unit loses a step um, I believe, yep, that's eliminated, but we do hold, so there is no further gain made by the Germans. That was a successful German defence, despite the loss of the tank unit. Quite frustrating from the German point of view, though. We need now to think about whether we attack down here with the, um, the 16th Panzer Mobile Infantry, the Elite Mobile Infantry, and the garrison, and the garrison have no attacking strength. Don't think I moved these guys, but just off shot there, there is a, a unit there. I don't think I moved those, but I'm not gonna worry about it. It's too late now. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got a defensive, defensive six against three, just the elite shift to put in there. That will put it to one-to-one. -one. Let's risk that, so one-to-one. -one these guys here against this this stack and that is a six on a one-to-one -one in clear terrain which pushes us to a dr2 and we could advance to 
Okay, so the defender must retreat or become disrupt and become disrupted or conduct that determined defense. I think it makes sense to conduct that determined defense. Now there's no buffs this time. We don't have any um any elite units there. The, the lead unit will be the top one. There's no lead lead unit, there's no defensive support. The CRT is not orange, so we can roll and we have a five which again is a delay or a hold with a step loss. Let's, let's do the step loss and hold again, cancelling out that retreat. Right, that is all of the combat done. Okay, taking off the counters, the disrupted counters, we've rallied as part of the recovery phase, we've removed any, anything that needs to come off there. Jumping into the supply phase. We, I did have a, a look, um, this unit just here, which is the reconnaissance unit for the Panzer Grenadier, 16th Panzers, and it is out of supply, and it is also isolated because we cannot draw supply across the mountains, um, and we cannot draw supply through the uh, controlled enemy, enemy controlled ports. So we can, with the overland portion, draw supply through one enemy zone of control, but not two, and in every direction, we're either hitting a mountain or we're hitting a multiples of enemy, um, of enemy zones of control. So we are isolated. Now we do now need to check for isolation attrition, which is a five or a six, basically loses, it's basically safe. Anything other than a five or six is a step loss. And we have a three, which is a step loss for that unit, part of attrition. And we are down to the reduced side. That stays the same. Next turn, we will have a few problems. Uh, no units are currently needing to be flipped in terms of the ASU units. So I think we are good to move straight into the allied initial phase. Now the Allies have reinforcements this turn, they have quite a lot um, and they are all sat in this floating reserve as part of the second wave. Many of them, as you can probably see, are for the American side and they can come on on these beachheads. I think it would be worth trying to come on, possibly not necessarily landing this turn with the Americans because there's this kind of congestion. We want to try and punch our way past those tanks if we can first. But is that a very silly idea? You know what? I just don't know. So anyway, let's get everything set up. We can't have more than six supply, uh, six landing points at any one time. And um, top of my head, the supply, uh, the landing is the same as the stacking points. So we've got three, five, that's three, and that's a one. So there's six in total in that stack. They are the 45th division. So let's put, let's pop them all here for now. Um, this one is a core ASU. So that's worth nothing. We get a free silhouetted tank unit, which is also nothing. Then it's one for each of those. Um, do I really want to put them all in the same space? Probably not, but they are one point a piece, so they can't really go anywhere else. For now, I'll just pop them there just for ease. Um, cross that bridge when we get to it, as they say. And on the Commonwealth side, we have a fair few uh, less units, um, a three landing point value, uh, 46th uh, regiment, for, uh, 46th division ASU, core ASU, and 56th division ASU. Wow, so this is all command stuff. So they can all go into the same, the same box in the landing, the landing uh, zones. I'll put them all in Roger Beach. Um, I think what we'll do then, um, don't need to flip anything over in terms of ASUs, so we can move into movement. Uh, 
Um, do I want these guys on now? These ones definitely, these can just come straight on and stop. Which is what they'll do, they'll just come on and stop. Uh, I won't move them any further than that for now. I kind of then sense I probably should move them a little bit. But yeah, let's, let's move them on. And then we'll move them on using tactical movement. We'll move them here. So they're going to be disrupted, or at least the ASUs will all be disrupted due to the fact that they've, they've moved more than one space. And they come on at reduced effectiveness as well. So actually, I should put a different counter on um, this counter rather than the disrupted counter. Okay, so they're not going to fight much this turn. Um, the reinforcements. Uh, we're not going to get any reinforcements next turn. This stack here has a fairly chunky couple of units there. That's a pretty decent attacking strength of nine plus a tank shift. Um, plus ASU support next to it. So I think that should be enough to try and punch into that panzer unit just there. Let me remove that. So I won't actually bring those on. I'll wait. I'll leave them there for now. Um, that does leave potentially this at a slight risk, but we do have those units there. To defend. I don't want to push out too far as the allies because I've had this happen as when I've played. I've pushed out too fast and got destroyed by the opponent. So let's just stop the movement there. I could actually, I could if I pan back up a little bit where we have the rangers at the top there. I could move out or I could try to attack. Would that be sensible though? That's the question, isn't it? Would it be sensible for me to try to do anything with these other than sit there and hold until somebody can get there to, re to reinforce them? Oh dear, too many decisions, too many decisions. Right, okay, that will be enough then. Let's that's, that's not worry about the movement anymore in the interests of, of playing this. Combat then, I won't attack with those rangers. They would be at a disadvantage against the tanks that are there and against the, the column shift. We don't have any air support and they are also out of range of any naval support as well. Now, whether I do the same here near to Salerno is a different question. That unit is out of supply, which has an impact on its defensive strength. It's also on its reduced side. So potentially if we are attacking with four attack strengths and an elite shift and a Commonwealth uh, aircraft support and Commonwealth naval support. That one hex. So that's a three tank, sh three column shift. Okay, so we're potentially looking at a one to one because this is still doubled. I just checked. It doesn't seem to be any comment around out of supply units not being benefiting from terrain. So that's still going to be doubled to a four defensive strength for that unit. These guys have an attacking strength of four, so that's one to one. Column shift for the elite. Column shift for the uh, air support. Column shift for the Navy, because we are within two spaces of the coastline. And that would be a total of three shifts and going moving from one to one, two to one, three to one, all the way up to four to one. So let's roll that dice. The Germans do not have anything they can support with. It's a four on the four to one, which gives us an A1, D1 result. So A1, D1 is both sides lose a step. Surviving defenders must either retreat, become disrupted, or conduct a determined defense. Attacker may advance too, but I don't think that is applicable because we have removed that unit and therefore those guys go into the eliminated box. The commandos can now advance after combat. I think I think we will. It would leave the 
No, actually, no. I think I will decline to advance from combat. I want to keep Salernum open as much as I can. So we'll, I will decline to advance from combat. So I don't want anybody coming down this way and stealing Salerno from under me. Moving on to this combat here on Red Beach, trying to punch through those panzers there. We've got a baseline strength of nine for the main attack force. Beachhead don't contribute towards the attack strength. And there's nothing under here that can support in terms of uh, assisting forces. Um, so that is a straight up three to one, because we have a nine attack strength versus two. Sorry, that is actually four to one, isn't it? Because we've got a nine versus two. I can flip the divisional ASU to make that a five to one. Wow, that's pretty cool from a, um, an allied point of view. So let's roll the dice. And we have a six, which is a defender shattered advance four. Wow, we are punching straight through there. Defender loses a step. They are eliminated in this case. And what we'll have, we can do now is we can move four spaces with our mechanized units, which in this case would just be the tanks, two spaces with our non-mechanized units. So clearly we'll go straight through the, the village of Paston, up onto the top of the ridge there. And then we could potentially move a further two with the with the tanks, which would bring us to about here. We could potentially go there. But what I think I'll do is I'll actually stick to them together like that, creating a Zoc bond across there. The Zoc bond would be between the hexes and the, the units underneath um, and not risking any kind of attack on our tanks in the hills. The tanks are really weak in the hills, to be fair. OK, but that's a pretty good result from the, from the American point of view. I'll just pop a control counter on the space just to make sure I remember to count it. And then we just need to think about under here. We have a three attack strength versus a, what would be a six because of the hill. So that's not going to do any more combat, I don't think, there. Meaning we move into recovery. We rally units, remove any effectiveness markers. Um, that's done. And then check supply, flip issues with supply points. I will spend that supply point to flip over the 36 divisions ASU. And then I believe we are done. We should check the, um, the victory points just to make sure we've got it right. So we've got one there, one there, one there, to that that is a total of four is that correct one two three four five we've actually got five yep i thought we had slightly more than i thought six because of the rangers we actually have six okay so we are doing pretty well as the allies at this point but the reinforcements will come on now for the germans and we've got a couple of turns with uh some quite significant reinforcements and very little for the Allies. So it's going to be a case of seeing if we can maintain the uh, advantage here as the Allies, as the German reinforcements start to roll in. That's where I'll stop for now. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you for the next one.